Howdy, everybody. Here we are, all ready to take you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner. Brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. Tonight, I want to talk especially to all the women who listen to Lum and Abner. You've probably noticed that modern shoppers seldom buy brands they don't know much about. Given a choice, they choose the brand they know best. Now, there's a reason for this. It's not an accident. It's not because of advertising alone. It is primarily because some products are far superior to others. Take the case of malted milk, for instance. For nearly 50 years, Horlicks has been a household byword all over the world. And why? Because Horlicks is a superior product. Because for richness, flavor, results, Horlicks has no equal. Made from only rich, full cream milk and the finest of wheat and malted barley, it is vacuum processed to prevent loss of precious vitamins and minerals. And remember, Horlicks was the first company to successfully powder milk by combining it with the extracts of wheat and malted barley. And they concentrate all their rich experience in the making of malted milk products only. And now, let's see what's happening down in Pine Ridge. Things are not running very smoothly at the Jotham Down store. Abner, as the new president, has adopted a dictatorial attitude, which isn't proving very popular with his old friend Lum. As we look in on our old friends today, we find Abner out of the store for a few minutes, and Lum is taking advantage of his absence by sitting in the president's chair with his feet propped up on the desk, enjoying life as he used to, before the recent change in officers. <laughs> Cedric Weehunt is also resting. Listen. That's our ring, ain't it, Mr. Lum? Huh? You say that was our ring, weren't it? I don't know. I was... Yeah. Yeah, that's all right. <laughs> Might be somebody wanting some groceries. Yeah, it's just what I'm feared of. Yeah, I'm so wore out, I don't want to move. Uh, ain't you going to answer it? Well, they'll ring again more than likely. Well, Swan, a feller can't sit down for five minutes without that dead blame telephone ringing. If I had my way about it, we'd just have the thing took out. Hello? Yes, Mom? I reckon so. When would you want them? Well, we get it over as quick as we can, but we're awful busy down here now. What was you to want them? Uh, 18 pounds for a dollar. All right, dollars worth of sugar. Is that all? Oh. Yes, ma'am, I reckon we've got them. Two cans. All right, much for... Huh? All right, what else? Block of soda. No, the stick bluing is the only kind we've got. Well, you might try Dick Hudson's store. I think he keeps it. Uh, was that all? Oh, yes, ma'am. In a big number two and a half can. All right, thank you, Mom. Then he's gonna hang up a receiver before she thinks there's something else she wants. Well, that woman order all day if somebody stand there and listen to her. Who, who was it, Sister Simpson? No, it's a widow Abernathy. She's always in a terrible hurry for something. Here, yeah, better get this stuff together and take it on over there. She'd be calling back over here pestering the life out of us if we don't. Yes, Mom. Swan, this work is killing me. We ain't been opened up a week, and I need to vacate myself already. It, it ain't like it was when you was president around here. Mr. Abner's too particular about a fella setting down. <laughs> yeah, he just likes to show his authority. Biggest mistake I ever made in my life when I give him that office. Not only working the life out of me, but some of these ideas he's been having is going to ruin us. He'd bankrupt the giver men in 60 days if they'd turn him loose. Uh, he, he was saying this morning that he's going to start taking in hogs and cows and chickens and one thing or another. Swapping groceries for them. Yeah, but I'm going to put my foot down on that. Get a batch of livestock down here, and they'll eat us out of business in no time at all. As long as these groceries are just sitting there on the shelves, they ain't eating nothing, that's the same. Uh, Mr. Lum, here comes Mr. Dick. Yeah. yeah go ahead and get that stuff going over to the winter, Cedric. Get back as quick as you can. That sawmill crew will be quitting directly and coming down here. I don't want to have to wait on them all by myself. Yes, Mom. 
Well, howdy, Dick. Come in. Yeah, hello, Ron. How are you today? Oh, just only tolerably, Dick. How's yourself? <laughs> Fine as the east string on a fiddle. <laughs> How's the store been is coming along? Oh, it ain't no count, Dick. I'm just plumb disgusted with it. Well, I thought you were doing right well. Oh, we're selling lots of stuff, but we ain't making nothing to speak of. Sit down, sit down. Yeah, thanks, Ron. Sure. It looks like Abner can study up more ways to lose money than any one man I ever seen. Well, I heard he made uh, quite a little money on that soap deal, huh? He told me he sold agency to Squire Skimp for $75 profit. Yeah, I don't think Abner sold it to him. I think Squire just bought it. <laughs> that weren't brains. That was just luck that got him out of that. <laughs> he's got a new a new idea he's working on now, though. He's uh, figuring on turning this into a swap store. A swap store? Yeah, instead of selling stuff out of the store for cash, he's going to let folks swap his hogs and cattle and potatoes and stuff like that. Sort of a peddling wagon, except it ain't a wagon. Well, I don't know now, Lonnie. I'll well, get you fellas out on a limb, man. That's what I've been trying to tell him, but he's got to worry he won't even listen to me no more. Says he's the president and he's going to run things to suit himself. Well, you still own a half interest in the store, don't you? Well, I thought so, but the way he acts, I'm just one of the hard hands <laughs> around here. Well, now, you just can't stand back and let him lose everything he's got here, Lonnie. That swap idea won't work at all. That's been tried before. Just get a bunch of livestock in here, it'll eat up more stuff than there were. Yeah. I know what them the words I told him, but he's so hard-headed, it's just like arguing with a stump on far. Well, you know, I thought at first it'd be a good idea to let Abner act as present for a while. I um, thought he might have some new ideas for your business. Yeah, he's got plenty of ideas, all right. Got more imagination than a ten-year-old young <laughs> Well, I don't know what to tell you to do, Lum. As long as he's present, well, there's not much that you can do. Well, he's got me to where I don't care what happens, hardly. Well, I'd just have a talk with him by you. See if you can get him to turn the office back over to you. Well, I'll take this order on over there, Mr. Lama. Be back directly. All right, Cedric. Ah, hello, Cedric. How are you, Mr. Dick? Why, fine, thank you, Cedric. Fine. No, Sir Dick, Abner's just a changed man. i never seen nothing go to a body's head in my life like this being president here. Used to, I could sit down and sort of reason things out with him. Yeah. Then he's now, if I even offer my opinion on something, he rears right up on his hind legs and gets mad. <laughs> well, you know, I was sort of curious to find out what kind of a present he'd make. It's the first time he's ever had any authority, you know. <laughs> yeah, he's wanted... making up for lost time, I'll tell you that. There ain't no way I could make him give me that office back, are they? Mm, I don't know, Lum. Not that I know of. But now, he'll more than likely get tired of it for long. Yeah, but the trouble is, I'm feared he'll have us bankruptcy before he gives up. <laughs> well, if I do, Lum, wait, I... Wait just... a minute, wait a minute. Here he comes up out there now. Don't, don't wait on we've been talking about it. Oh, no, no. He's so touchy nowadays, I'm feared to hey, say... Hey, howdy, man. I guess somebody's in the store, Dick. Your woman said you'd over here. Yeah, I thought I'd drop over and loaf for a few minutes, Abner, and see how he's getting along. Well, we're just doing fine. Just fine. The store is a shop set, I'd say. And I'm going to get better, too, as soon as I get a few of my ideas to working. Yeah. What are you doing in the president's chair, Lom? Well, I was just sort of sitting here talking to Dick. I... Uh-huh. I reckon you forgot what I said about sitting down during two hours. No, I never forgot. Well, but... I'll just take that care of myself. Dick, I've got the greatest idea started up that you've ever seen. Yeah, Lom was telling me about that, huh? Yeah, but he don't know all about it. See, I've got it all figured out right here on this piece of paper here. We're going to start swapping groceries for chickens and eggs and hay and cattle, all sorts of livestock. Special chickens. I want all of them I can get. Chickens? Yes, chickens. You see, Dick, now, if we can get a thousand chickens and they lay an egg a piece a day, that'll be a thousand eggs every day that we'll get. Yeah, but they ain't going to lay an egg a piece a day, though. Some of them might be. I know, I know. I figured you'd say something about like that. So I just cut that right half in two just to take care of any of them hens that's loafing on a job ain't doing their part. Now, that's 500 eggs a day that way. In 30 days, they'd have 15,000 eggs. And I figure uh, 15 eggs to a seven. Well, that'd be a 1,000 hens sitting all at once, and then they'd hatch off 15,000 chickens. Yeah, but... Now, I guess you... keep quiet, Ron, till I get done explaining that. Go ahead. That'll be 16,000 chickens that we'll have then. And I figure that uh, half of them laying an egg a day, well, that's 8,000 eggs a day. And in another 30 days, while well, we'll set them and hatch off 240,000 more chickens. Hmm. So in 60 days, we'll have 256,000 chickens. And then uh, figuring half of them for an uh, egg a day, why, well, that'd be 128,000 eggs a day that we'll be getting inside of two months from now. Hmm. And then... Uh, well, they yeah, figure eggs at 12 cents a dozen. We'll make 128,000 cents a day. 
at $1,280 a day. Now, how that for Benny? I got Pearl to figure it all out for me over at the place, and there's a figure right there if you want to look them over. How do you expect them hens to be laying eggs and setting at the same time? Huh? Well, you ain't even made no allowances for roosters there. Well, you crazy idiots, them hens are setting, they ain't going to be laying no eggs, and if they're laying eggs, they ain't going to be setting. <laughs> the whole idea ain't worth the paper's road on. Hey, I might have known that you wouldn't like the idea, Long, just because you never thought it up yourself. Well, I can tell you right now, I ain't going in on it. Well, I never asked you to. I'm the president of this store, and I'm a running thing. Well, well I... say, now, here, fella, I better get home back over the store. You fellas talking business in. I'll see you later then. Yeah, so long, Dick. Every time I bring up something, Mom, you're again. It makes me so dead brain mad I can't stand myself. Well, this thing is just when as far as it's going. I've stood back and let you have your way with all kinds of crazy ideas. But if you think you're going to swap this new stock of merchandise of ours off to a batch of chickens and cows and one thing or another, you just got another thing to think. Now, now, listen here. I don't know what you can do about it. I'm running a store. Well, we'll get to unsolved partnerships then. We'll divide it up the store. We've di- we done that once, and our grannies will do it again. You take your half and run it any way you want to, but I'll be dad blamed you're going to swap off my half of this merchandise for no such stuff as that. Well, what are we going to do about the building here? We can't divide it in two. Well, you can take one side, and I'll take the other. We just have two stores in here. You can put your half of the stock over there on that side, and I'll keep mine over here. And granny, if you want some competition, I'll give you plenty of it. <laughs> Well, this seems to be the only solution to the question of who is boss of the Jellum Down store. Ladies and gentlemen, in the following scene, Tom Henderson wants his friend Fred Murdoch to go out to lunch. Let's see what's holding them up. Come on, Fred. Let's go eat. What? Lunch already? Already? <laughs> Say, I'm famished. It's ages since breakfast. Well, I'm too busy anyway. How about an hour? Oh, nothing doing. Listen, Fred, how long have you keep going that long? I couldn't. Yeah, well, you see that bottle there, Tom? Sure. It's full of candy. No, not candy, Tom. Those are Horlick's malted milk tablets. You mean like Horlick's powder? Yeah, that's it, in tablet form. Every bit is rich and nourishing, too. And you know how sustaining a glass of Horlick's is. I'll say I do. We always have it in the house. But tablets? Yeah, they're pretty handy. Sure, they're handy. All you have to do is dissolve a couple in your mouth when you feel hungry or tired, and presto, you're all set again. That's how I keep going. And that's how you can eat so late, eh? Can you beat that? Say, can you spare a couple till I get some? Sure, you bet I can. That whole flask of Horlick's tablets only cost me a quarter. It lasts for days. Well, I use them when I get drowsy in mid-afternoon, too. They pep me up and give me new energy. Sounds like a good idea. Say, these tablets taste swell. Lunch in an hour, eh? Mm. Don't care with me. Meet you in the lobby. Well, Tom certainly learned something that he can use to good advantage. There's nothing like a couple of Horlick's malted milk tablets to warn off that, that hungry feeling when you're busy and you can't get out to lunch. They sustain you, give you sufficient energy to keep you going. Try some of these Horlick's tablets yourself. You can get them at your druggist in either natural or chocolate flavor. This is Carlton Brickert speaking for Lama Dabner and Horley, who now bid you all good night and good health.